Welcome. It's February 5th, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, good to have you with us again as we end this week. We're going to turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 23. So if you have your Bibles, turn there. Uh, we're going to look at uh, this verse. It was a verse for today on both Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Exodus 23, verse 25. Hear now the word of the Lord. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from among you. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen. I'm going to keep this up for just a moment because one another translation reads, Worship the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take and will take away your sickness away from you. Worship and service are seen often in the scriptures as synonymous. We serve the Lord through our worship. And even Paul addresses this later on in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 when he talking about the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, he, he shares with the congregation at Corinth that one of the problems they're having, why there's sickness, why there's, there's death uh, within their congregation, is that they are not serving the Lord through the Lord's Supper properly. They are not worshiping through the Lord's Supper properly. And because of their improper observance of the Lord's Supper, uh, there is sickness that has come upon him. God will bring blessing to us as we worship and serve him. As we give him the adoration and glory that is due his name, he will be glorified and he will uh, provide and care for his people. That is uh, his desire of us and his will for us, that we would serve him and that he would receive all the honor and the glory. Amen. Well, let's finish up this week uh, looking at uh, Pastor Bunyan as he reads from Psalm 6930. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. As with the presence, so the name of God is dreadful and fearful. Wherefore, his name rightly goes under the same title, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 28, 58. The name of God, which is that, but that by which he is distinguished and known from all others. Names are to distinguish. So man is distinguished from beasts and angels from men. So heaven from earth and darkness from light. Especially when by the name, the nature of the thing is signified and expressed. And so it was originally, for then names express the nature of the thing so named. And therefore it is that the name of God is the object of our fear because his name, his nature is expressed. Holy and reverend is his name, Psalm 111.9. And again proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. Exodus 34, 6, and 7. Also his name, I am, Jah, Jehovah, with several others, what is by them intended, but that his nature, as his power, wisdom, eternity, goodness, and omnipotence might be expressed and declared. The name of God is, therefore, the object of a Christian's fear. David prayed to God, Unite my heart to fear thy name, Psalm 86, 11. Indeed, the name of God is a fearful name and should always be reverenced by his people. Yea, his name is to be feared forever and ever, and that not only in his church and among his saints, but even in the world and among the heathen. And we're reminded that uh, in that final day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's the picture of everybody fearing the Lord, being brought down, brought low to worship him because of the acknowledgement of who he is in his great power, his omnipotence, his reign, his might, thus brings us down to our knees in fear and reverence of him. 
Well, let's close our week and our time together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the grace and the mercy that you show us. That despite your awesomeness and your power and your majesty, you have seen fit to redeem us, your lowly creatures. We thank you that your word tells us that you've demonstrated your love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for cleansing us. Thank you for giving us life through Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray as we prepare our hearts to gather on Sunday to worship, that we would come in the fear of the Lord to serve you, that we would find our strength and our hope in you, and that you would be glorified in us. Be with us today and in the coming days, that we might lift up our voices in, our, in your name, for the glory of your name. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us this week on Thoughts from the Word. We look forward to seeing you again on Monday as we gather together again and hear some more Thoughts from the Word. Thank you.